Hey friends, I'm Emiliano, the youth director here at Living Hope Church. We are so happy you were able to join us online today. With the winter weather making our roads unsafe for driving, we've decided to meet online only today. So grab your hot chocolate, get cozy on the couch, and prepare your hearts for a powerful time of worshiping Jesus and diving into his word together. Pray. 
friends, I am Emiliano, the youth director here at Living Hope Church. We are so happy that you're able to join us online today. With the winter weather making our roads unsafe for driving, we've decided to meet online only today. So you're in the right place. Thank you so much for tuning in. Before we move on in our service, we'd like to give you an opportunity to support all that God is doing here at Living Hope Church. 2024 is going to be a super exciting year for us as a church, and we hope that you will be a part of helping us reach that next one person for Jesus Christ. There are three ways that you can give today. You can give on our website at livinghopechurch.com give. You can text to give by texting LHC to 188-364-4483. Or once the weather clears, you can go ahead and drop off a check or cash directly to the hub. I'd now like to take a moment to go ahead and pray for the offering. Lord, thank you so much for all that you've provided for Living Hope Church. We pray that everyone can stay safe during the, this cold weather, and we just pray that uh, you will just continue to, to provide uh, for this next year of 2024, and we just pray that um, through your provision, um, we will have the funds necessary to continue to grow the church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our warming shelter is going to be open this winter season on nights with freezing temperatures. If you or anyone you know needs a warm place to sleep, all are welcome. Also, if you would like to support our warming center by donating or volunteering, visit our website at liveloveoutreach.com. Baptism weekend is almost here. If you'd like to proclaim your love for Jesus to the world by getting baptized, this is your chance. Come take the plunge on Saturday, January 27th at 6 p.m. or Sunday, January 28th at either our 9 or 11 a.m. service or on Tuesday, January 30th at 6.30 p.m. Please register online at livinghopechurch.com slash events. Do you know someone who is struggling with addiction? Exchange is putting on a powerful community support and education night that you won't want to miss. Our amazing pastor Vicky and other community leaders trained in recovery will give an insightful presentation on addiction and on the services and resources available to battle it. Together, let's make a difference. We hope to see you here at Living Hope Church on Wednesday, January 31st from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Attention middle and high school students! Our youth ministry will be taking two trips to Mount Hood for winter camp this year. Middle schoolers, you will have your weekend on the mountain from February 9th through the 11th, and high schoolers, you will have your weekend on the mountain from February 23rd through the 25th. Don't miss this unforgettable time of growing closer to Jesus and having a blast with your friends in the snow. Please register online at livinghopechurch.com events. Lastly, to stay connected to everything that is happening at Living Hope Church, we highly recommend that you download our Living Hope Church app. On our app, you can submit prayer requests, read the Bible, re-watch messages, and stay up to date on all of our groups, ministries, and events. Our Living Hope Church app is available on both the App Store and the Google Play Store. Well, that's it for announcements. Thank you again so much for tuning in today. Now, prepare your hearts for a powerful message by Pastor Doug. Hey, if you're watching this today, it means that you're home just like me. Enjoying the snow, the ice, whatever it is. Hey, take just these few minutes and learn what God says about his written word. What is the instruction that pastors like me have to you, the church audience? You're watching me today through a TV screen or a computer screen. And you must ask yourself, why do I drive to church every week? Why do I attend church every week? Or why am I watching this now? And I, I think a core reason we do this thing called church is because we have this written word of God that he's given us that's intact, complete, and perfect for guidance in our life. And he uses that instruction as a guide path in our life. But the key to that is it must be taught. It must be taught in a correct way. And, you know, I'll be honest, uh, when you teach the word of God, it's not always super exciting. I work real hard at trying to make it come alive for all of you, but that's really the Spirit of God's job. And that's the beautiful thing about the Bible is it's the Holy Spirit of God working in your heart to seed those words, to bring them alive, to remind you of how you're to handle certain things in your life. So as you sit today and enjoy the weather, enjoy your family, take this instruction for today and know that my job as your pastor is to teach and preach the Word of God accurately. My case to you today as we begin is that teaching and preaching is necessary. 
and it is a valuable part of life. Like you and like me, we all start school at some point in our life. Some make it a lot longer than others. Some go all the way to college and on to grad schools, and some become doctors. But no matter what your pathway of education might be, in your life, everyone believes that education is good. Well, education comes from reading a book, being taught by an instructor, and gaining knowledge on a specific topic. But how Christianity's difference is that professor never goes home. That professor indwells your heart. That professor is the Holy Spirit of God. Right out of the book of Acts in Acts 2.42, it says in the early church they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. That's the early church. They believed that the teaching of the apostles was so necessary that they were constantly doing it. They were in constant learning. Is that you in your life today? Do you believe the teachings of the Word of God are necessary in your life? Do you make them a part of the fabric of your life? Because teaching God's Word, it's a gift. It is a gift. It's not for everyone to do. Not everyone is gifted in presenting the Word of God. Romans 12, 6 and 7 makes this case. However, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each one of us are to use them properly. If prophecy in proportion to one's faith, if service in the act of serving, or the one who teaches in the act of teaching. So here's three gifts. The prophetic, the foretelling of truth in someone's life, the act of service of putting others ahead of yourself, and then, of course, the act of teaching. But in those, we all may differ differently in the, in the body. Not everyone would be comfortable doing what I'm doing right now. There's gifts and there's talents that God gives us all. But if God's given you the gift of teaching, then you're to give back to others. Some audiences may not be as large as others. Some of you may need to teach a class or a small group. Some of you may be able to teach a medium-sized group. Or maybe some of you are okay with doing what I do. But exercise the gift that God's given you. Whether it is teaching or whatever it might be, participation in the Bible is asked for from those who follow Jesus. I get to give my gift, which is to teach and the gift of of leading others. And I love that I get to do that in my life. I consider it a treasure. You know, for me, as a teacher of God's Word, it's required... For church leaders. It says in 1 Timothy 3 2, an overseer then must be above reproach. He must be the husband of one wife, temperate, self controlled, respectable, hospitable, skillful in teaching. You know, the bar for a church leader is that it's pretty high. We live under these moral restraints that the Word of God gives us, and we have a lot of eyes on us. When we fail, we see Scripture says there's double judgment for leaders of the church, and that's because we're judged by God and we're judged by man. And we live under that pressure at times because man's judgment for us is very difficult. But I will tell you, it is our job to be above reproach. It is our job to have one wife and to be a one one woman man. In other words, committed to one person in our life. We're to be temperate and self-controlled, not outburst with anger or frustrated. We're to be respected And we're to be hospitable, always welcoming others, but lastly, skillful in teaching. Now, not all of our overseers and pastors and elders are number one gifts teaching, but we do want them working on that. We want them to learn the skill because we believe that if God's called them to that office, that's a place where they can at least mentor others, at least have a small group, at least have some way that they're passing on to others. I encourage you, and I've said this in past sermons, but I I remind you today, as you take these still moments to watch it snow, that you'll pray for your pastoral team here at Living Hope Church. And if you're watching and you go to a different church, pray for us and pray for your pastors. Also love us. Do kind things. Always do kind things because the work we do is hard and we carry burdens a lot of you can't understand. Stand up for us in conversations. Stand with us because we stand with you. And you know what? 
occasionally give us a hug. You guys do so well at that. But spontaneous love for us is so appreciated. Always look out for people that are your servants. They look out for you. And of course, support the ministry through your financial blessings in your life. As we go into our tomorrows, we ask that at this church, we always keep vision in front of us, that we always support our ministries. Because you're not just supporting a person, you're supporting the incredible ministries of this church. You know, Jesus is always our model. And when we teach, we're to point to Jesus. And that's something you're going to know at Living Hope Church that we're going to always do. Matthew says it this way when he says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, talking about Jesus, and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew, slammed against the house, and yet it did not fall. For it had been founded on the rock. Listen to this. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against the house and it fell and its collapse was great. The instructions of Jesus and the gospel, the instructions of the word of God should always point us back to our foundation, the rock, Jesus Christ. If our words disagree with his words, then run. Because when teaching is not built on Jesus as truth, it is a lie. First John checks that out very clear. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out of the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. That is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and now it is already in the world. You have to, as a leader and teacher of God's word, stand on the truth that Jesus is an absolute way to heaven. He's not one of the ways. He's not diminished. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. If people give you anything but that, and they don't confess Him, then you run. That's not the spirit of truth. Jesus is from God, and He is the one that is our way to heaven. You know, in ministry, you regularly can get harsh statements and predictions of coming doom about you and those around you. It's sometimes hard to absorb because people have their styles and opinions. They have their ideas of what effective church will be. One of the most effective things I want to tell you about a church should be what I'm talking about today. If all we do is thrill you with grand programs and we want to thrill you with all that the world could offer, but we don't teach you what God says, even when it's hard, then watch out. If you ever are around someone that entertains you, but they don't point you to the difficult about what God says, then you need to assess that. What God says is difficult sometimes for us to obey. It's hard for the speaker, the teacher, sometimes to convey because it's hard information. But it's the heart of God. The heart of God is always to do what's best in our life. So no matter what comes against us, no matter the trials, no matter the frustration, no matter people's bad opinions, you do what you do for Jesus Christ alone. And when teaching is done that way, it is honorable. In 1 Timothy 5.17, it says, The elders who lead well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. Now, that is one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and I've shared it before because it's so important. <laughs> not because I need your double honor, not because I need you at home today to send your checks to Doug Frazier Ministry. No, it, it is an important thing to understand this. It goes all the way back to the Old Testament. When they used to bring the provisions in for the priest, the, the high priest got double portion. You say, well, why? Boy, that seems like hierarchy. That seems like you're esteeming others. Well, it's the unseen of the pressure of carrying the burden of all those you lead is the principle. It's the unseen of you may never know how heavy that burden is. You, you don't get that information because that person is carrying everyone's individual 
stories of pain. And they've been brought into that, and they're, they're carrying that. And I don't, say that, I don't say that just for me. I say that for a lot of our elders and pastors. We carry this burden for all of you. And we pray for you, and we suffer with you. We're there for you in times of need. Double honor refers not only to abundance of respect for the people of the body toward the leaders, but that they care about them in such a way that they will reasonably compensate them, whether it's through provisions of food in the Old Testament or in our modern day to make sure that they're cared for. The term for honor in the original language has the notion of compensation here. In English, we connect this word with the idea of honorarium. A payment for an unbilled professional service would be what this is called. Paul felt that it was the duty of the shepherd to care for God's flock. And when he does, he should be honored in a double way. In two ways. Both with esteem and respect and fair compensation. Elsewhere we see Paul say those who taught the word of God should provide their teachers sharing all good things with them. Galatians 6.6 6 says, The church has an obligation to protect its dedicated leaders from being overworked and underpaid. Failure to adequately support them indicates a lack of honor. I challenge you, church, in this season where our church is going new places and God's opened new doors and we have this great facility to open your heart to supporting our ministries. That in this year, you'll be dedicated to that, not, not to support a person, but to support ministry. The work we do here is vital for Vancouver. It's vital for Clark County. It's vital for our state. We need to be going deeper. We need to be going further. We need to be helping more and more people. And that is a way to honor each other in our commitment, to honor our leadership, and a way for us to further the kingdom work. You know, I'm a tent maker like Paul, and it's hard. I still have a, another job, and I'll continue to do that until the day that we're so healthy that my other pastors are paid well enough that I can give that up. And that's kind of my strata. But I can't get there without all of you being on board. And I can tell you what God's Word says. It says, hey, you're to care for all of us who bring leadership to you. If we're going to teach you God's Word then get behind us, support us, pray for us, love us, hug us, honor us in ways that God convicts your heart to do. Not in ways that we expect. I don't need anyone to give me anything. Matter of fact, I'll work as hard as I need to to provide for my family just like you do. But when you are a preacher and you're a teacher of God's Word, then the church who you serve, they should feel, your, they should feel that you're important to them. For all of you, do your pastors, do they feel your love? Do they feel that you're behind them? Because that is what God asked us to do. I can tell you, we love you. We absolutely serve you. We're willing to go extra miles for you because we believe in what we do here. We do what we do here because we believe teaching is to equip all of you for action. Ephesians 4.11 says, And he gave some as apostles. Some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers. And look what he gave them for. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. My job is not to do all the ministry. My job is to equip all of you with his word and you get to do the ministry. We'll do it together. I'll show up. But I want all of you to take captive of what God's calling you to. To see you rise up as you did in your education. Wherever you cut off, you attained an education. Is the same pursuit in your life, the study of God's Word. We meet every Thursday night to grow in this book. You should participate. If not then, then you should study Scripture for yourself. If not then, then make sure you're listening to my words today. You are responsible to equip yourself.
by listening to the Word of God so that this body, this local Living Hope Church can be built up. And that as an individual, you'll become a mature person so that you can help others. Why, you say? Because teaching truth overcomes falseness, false teaching, and, and it causes personal growth. Ephesians 4, if we read on, says in verse 14, As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of people, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into Him, who is the head, that is Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. The phrase here, tossed to and fro, is a nautical term in the Greek. It means that we're getting pitched one side to the other, to move abruptly, to be subjected to the violence of the waves. God's given ministry to us is the anchor in our life. It's the talent God's given us to overcome those winds and those waves. He is the one that helps us stand in the thrashing environment to avoid shipwreck, to be able to go where no one else has gone before. Receive encouragement and strength, church, this day, because God has equipped you in your future for a task that only Jesus could assign. Find that in your life. For growth to happen at Living Hope Church, we must become a body, a whole body, that fits together perfectly, where we don't just have good teachers, we don't just have good evangelists, we have people committed on all fronts, doing lots of things, and they're committed in their finances, they're committed in their time, they're committed in their talents. Christianity is not about being a loner. It's not about sticking it out alone, but it's about what God's given you, you can't help but give to others. God's gift of equipping and building us up, it cannot be exercised in isolation like we have today. You know, it's kind of weird. It feels COVID-ish to sit in here today. I'm talking to a bunch of white chairs again with my same group of tech, tech, Gavin, Kevin, Juan, and Andy feels all alone. If this were the church or it was to be, then it would be hard. But I know we're more than empty white chairs. Church, we are on the move. God has given us a new thing here. We've got exciting things coming. And I believe as members of the body of Christ, as we grow strong and stable, as we begin to use our gifts and we grow as the Scripture calls us to, and we use our spiritual gifts and talents for His purposes, we can make a difference in our street and our world. So I challenge you to grow together. Make it the number one thing in your life for this new year. That you in your life will say, I want to grow strong. I want to be a better person. And I want to be a part of a church that all the people together are saying this. The teaching of God's Word is a necessary thing. It is a gift that He gives to some. And it is required for leaders like me to exercise and to teach the Word of God accurately. And that it points to Jesus. Because if it doesn't, it's a lie. That the teaching would be honorable. That all of you would say, we honor the teacher. We honor what he's saying. And we're behind him. And we're behind the teaching. So much so that we're going to practice it. We're going to equip ourselves in listening. And we're going to go and practice through the work of the ministry what we've been instructed to do. It is then that we will overcome the false teachings and narratives of the world. It is then that we will overcome emptiness in our lives. It is then that we will grow. The best days of living hope lie ahead. Even on the coldest days of our lives, we know where hope is found it's not found in what I say it's not found in what you say it's not found in my opinion it's not found in your opinion it's found in Jesus Christ as long as we teach that his blessing on our future will remain I love you living hope let's pray together Lord Jesus I pray that this message will echo in hearts 
It's not what I said, but what you said. Thank you that your word speaks loud. Thank you that your word is truth. We rest in its result for individuals. Lord, I pray for the best days ahead for Living Hope Church. Lord, may you use this church to spread your gospel, to see people grow in the word of God, to do incredible things in the years to come. We know you've blessed us and you brought us to this new day. And Lord, now we're ready to take those next steps of letting you have our lives individually so that you can have our entire church body finding their place in your service to your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Everything changed It's getting harder to recognize The person I was Before I encountered Christ I don't walk like I used to I don't talk like I used to I've been washed from the inside I've been washed from the inside out Hallelujah Hallelujah I know it was the blood It could have only been the blood Hallelujah And hallelujah I know it was the blood It could have only been the blood It could have only been your blood I cannot explain But nothing's more real than this In the presence of God Oh, what my heart experienced When my shame hit the wayside And my sin met the most high I was washed from the inside I was washed from the inside out Hallelujah I know it was the blood, it could have only been the blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know it was the blood, it could have only been the blood. It could have only been. It's never been about performance, perfection, or striving for acceptance. Let me tell you, it's only by the blood. It's never been about deserving or earning. It's a gift that's freely given. Let me tell you, it's only by the blood. Does anybody want to be heard? the blood it could have only been the blood and hallelujah and hallelujah I know it was the blood it could have only been Thank you is not enough 
Jesus, your grace, your mercy poured out for us. Yeah, I will love you forever. Here on earth into heaven, I've been washed from the inside. I've been washed from the inside out. I've been washed from the inside.